Welcome to video four for week eight. In the first three videos, I defined a whole new way of describing conics, and we did a bunch of work to figure out how to prove Kepler's laws. They were long videos, but they were sort of there to give a wrap up to the parametric curve unit of this course to give you an idea why parametric curves were important. In the next two videos for this week, video four and five, I want to set up the rest of the course. The rest of the course is going to be about scalar fields, and I want to make sure we have all of the tools and terminology for that. So we've got two setup videos going into week nine where we get into the properties of scalar fields proper. The first set of terminology I need is the terminology of the topology of Rn. So what do I mean by topology? Topology is about open and closed sets. So there are certain sets in a space that are determined to be open, certain sets that are determined to be closed, and a topology is a, is a determination of these sets with a bunch of properties that gives us a sense of the, the shape and the relationship between points in the space. That's a bit vague. Let me try and be more specific and get into the definition here. So if I have a subset of Rn and a point in that subset, that point is called an interior point if, the, if, this, if this condition holds. There exists some small epsilon that all points that are close to the point A, so the distance between A and B less than epsilon, so if A is here, we've got a little circle or sphere of radius epsilon, so all other points within that are also in the set. So for an interior set, this is basically saying that if you have a little point A, if you move a little bit away from the point A, you're still in the set. You're really inside the set. You're not at the edge. You're inside. You have a little bit of movement. It could be a tiny bit of movement. This epsilon could be a very small radius, but there is at least some small radius that you can move and stay within the set. A boundary point, on the other hand, is a point such that there are two points within any radius, one of which, which is in the set and one of which isn't. So if I think about a point right on the boundary and I draw a little circle, well then, if this is the set A, something is in and something is out. And no matter how straw, small I draw that circle, there will always be something in and something out of the set inside that circle. Those give us boundary points. Then a set is open if all of its points are interior points, and a set is closed if it includes all its boundary points. Those are the two formal abstract definitions of closed and open sets. Let me try and do a little bit of drawing to try and demonstrate this. So if I have a disk, anything inside the disk is an interior point. So this is an R2, because any point inside here, I can draw a little circle around it and still be inside the disk. It doesn't matter how close I am. I could be very close to the edge, but as long as I'm not actually at the edge, I can still draw a little circle around it and remain inside the set. So all of these points inside the set are interior points. This point and any point on the edge is a boundary point because any circle I can draw around it will partially be inside the set and partially outside the set. If the disk includes its boundary, I call it closed, and this will be the closed disk. If the disk doesn't include its boundary, and we often draw this with dotted lines, we sort of think about uh, the points inside not including the boundary points, that would be the open disk. And a lot of this comes from uh, from strict and non-strict inequalities. So I think about the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1 in R2. So maybe this is the unit circle. Then if x squared plus y squared less than equal 1, that's going to give me the unit circle including its boundary x squared plus y squared strictly less than 1, that's going to give me all points inside the unit circle but exclude the boundary. So this is going to define an open set, this is going to define a closed set. That's the basic idea of, of what's going on with these open and closed sets. So think of the, about the open disk and the closed disk as the archetypical examples of this. Uh, we can generalize this. The closed disk in higher dimensions is written b to the n close, called the closed ball. In R3 we can think about the sphere, and you can think about the sphere as a sort of solid sphere including its boundary, or a solid sphere not including its boundary. Its boundary is the sphere, 
which we write s to the n minus 1. So if s to the n minus 1 is part of the ball, it'll be closed. If s to the n minus 1 is not part of the ball, it'll be open. So whether or not you include this bounding shell of this solid disk, and that works in any Rn. We also have the notion of intervals. So on the real number line, we could have the open interval from 1 to 3. That would be 1 less than x less than 3. Or we could have the closed interval from 1 to 3. That would be 1 less than x less than 3. And those give us open and closed sets on the real number line. We can extend these to open and closed intervals in Rn as well. The notation uses this time sign. This is not the cross product. It's the same notation. It's a bit frustrating, even though um, this is also vectors, but this is not the cross product. This just means that the first uh, coordinate has to be in this range, the second coordinate has to be in this range, all the way up. The third coordinate has to be in this range, uh, all the way up to the nth coordinate. And the same notation happens if we used curve brackets, we exclude the endpoints. If we use square brackets, we include the endpoints. So that gives us the notion of an open interval in Rn and a closed interval in Rn. You can think of these as rectangular or rectangular prism spaces. So in R2, if you went from 1 to 3 in the x-axis and from 2 to 4 in the y-axis, then you'd get a box that went from 1 to 3 in x and 2 to 4 in y. So the y-coordinates would all between, be between 2 and 4. The x-coordinates would all be between 1 and 3. And this box would be an interval in R2. If it, include, it included its boundaries, we would write it with square brackets, it would be closed. If it didn't include its boundaries, we would write it with curved brackets and it would be open. And then in R3, you'd add another dimension and get boxes and so forth and so on.